Recently, I platinum Ghost of Tsushima and got all of the trophies in the Iki Island and New Game Plus DLCs, but there is still one more game mode I must take on for that 100%. The Multiplayer. Legends mode was released 3 months after the initial games released as a free add-on or a standalone game if you just wanted the multiplayer. It is an online co-op mode that you can play with up to 2-4 people as you play through story missions, a wave-like survival mode, and the infamous raids. Then about 9 months later they also added in the rivals modes, weekly nightmare challenges, and the ability to further increase gear's power through mastery challenges and cursed gear. In terms of trophies, there are 6 in the original Legends Mode DLC, and then a further 4 were added with the Rivals and Mastery Challenges DLC. The PSN Profiles Guide says the first DLC is a 5 out of 10 and takes 30 hours to complete, and the second DLC guide says it's a 1 out of 10 difficulty and takes 2 hours to complete. And so with that being said, this was my time with the Ghost of Tsushima Legends Mode. Starting off, I was given some backstory to what's going on in this mode, and I was also reminded of the controls through a quick intro tutorial. During this tutorial, you are introduced and given the opportunity to try out the four different class types. These include the Samurai, the Hunter, the Ronin, and the Assassin. The Samurai is the tanky class that has heaps of defense and can do loads of melee damage. The Hunter obviously uses a bow and is more of a ranged attack class. The Ronin is essentially the healing class. And finally, the Assassin class is the stealthy class that can do loads of damage and is effective with ghost weapons. And so by the end of this tutorial, I had to choose one of the four, but keeping in mind, one of the trophies is getting every single class to rank 20, so I was going to be using all of them eventually, but as my first playthrough, I decided to choose the Assassin. And so without really knowing exactly what this mode was all about, the first thing my friends and I decided to do was a quick little quick play of survival and see how we went. And surprisingly, we actually did pretty well for our first try. To be fair, we are playing on the easiest difficulty as we are super underleveled. But we did manage to clear out all 15 waves and get some pretty decent gear out of it. And also got to rank 4 out of 20, which is pretty good after one game. But as you can see, one game took 40 minutes and each rank you need more and more XP to level up. So it gets pretty hard pretty quick. That's what she said. <laughs> And so unfortunately after 40 minutes of that, one of my friends had to leave. But luckily my good friend Aesops was able to stay and help me out. And so the first two trophies we decided to go for were Champion of the Kami, which is simply for winning a Legends Rivals match and a painful blockage for summoning five shades in a single Rivals match. Not that hard, right? Well, we decided to go into separate parties and ready up at the same time to try and get into the same match and just verse each other and let one of us win. Torment your Wow, you're seeing? Oh yeah, Jamie, hey! <laughs> We're versing! <laughs> oh, no way. We're versing these two. So yeah, that didn't really work out. We ended up getting put on the same team anyway. So we decided we were just going to beat the randoms instead. And not going to lie, when I first heard about this mode, I thought it was going to be an actual PvP mode where you fight against the other team, like actual proper PvP, but no. All you do is fight against enemies and the quicker you take them out, the quicker you can win and the other team have to do the same thing. So in order to win a Rivals match, you have to fill up the top bar up there all the way to 65, and the way to do this is by taking out enemies and picking up the Magatama, which are these blue token things you see. And with the Magatama, you can make an offering and purchase abilities or enemies that will spawn on the other team's side and interfere with their progress. So our goal was not only to win, but also purchase five shades in one match, as that was for the other trophy. A painful blockage, first trophy of the game. <laughs> bro. Why does it say busy? It was a no, I didn't oh, even do it. Bro. No. <laughs> no. So yes, unfortunately, not only did we get absolutely smoked, as we didn't even make the 65 mark, but... My friend got the painful blockage trophy, but I was literally one second off getting it myself. And so we ended up voting for a rematch, and only one of the other teams spawned in. So we were like, let's go 2v1. This should be easy, right? Well, the good news is I did manage to finally get the painful blockage trophy for summoning five shades in a single rivals match. Bad news is we got smoked, and it was by one guy this time. No. <laughs> 
Shit. So we rematched him again, and this time we weren't just going to focus on purchasing five shades to get the trophy as we were done with it, we were just going to purely focus on winning. And this time we managed to just take a lead once we got to 65 Magatama, and from there you have to survive three waves of enemies in order to win. We managed to get to the third and final wave, but unfortunately, Intense Bandsaw had also caught up. Bro, he's... Oh, no. Even the heroes what? Bro, how? <laughs> this dude's insane. <laughs> Jesus. Bro, we suck. <laughs> unfortunately, we couldn't rematch him again, but we thought probably a good thing because he was obviously too good for us even as a solo so we loaded into a new game this time we decided to stay in the same party to win together and this time we took a massive lead as we got to the last stand way before the other team we were onto the second wave and they were still on the first wave so we had a fairly good lead unfortunately we both ended up dying which we thought we would lose but all it does is restart you from the beginning of the same wave so we still had a bit of a lead on them. Once again, we did the exact same thing on the third wave, we both fell. Luckily, the other team kept dying on the first wave, so we still had a fairly big lead. And this time, we were gonna make sure we didn't bot out. Nice. Yes. Let's go. Yes, champion of the tummy. Right after that, we decided to go for another easy trophy by completing our first story mission. Luckily, we were a duo as the story mission, you can only have two people to play it. Essentially, they're broken into three stages or chapters and you have to complete each one. And overall, it takes about 10 minutes to complete each story mission. And so we ended up completing the first story mission on bronze difficulty pretty easily. Is done. Let's go, hey, promising, promising stuff. Start. Complete a Legends mode story. I didn't even know that was a trophy. Yeah. Well, there's one for defeating one, and then there's one for completing all of them. <laughs> so yes, that is exactly what we had to do. We unfortunately had to complete all nine story missions, which was a bit of a grind. And so about two hours later, after a massive grind, we completed the final story mission on bronze difficulty. And so we got the trophy, True Understanding. And you know what is really good about this process? We then went and played through all nine story missions again on silver difficulty. The reason why is because this was the fastest way to rank up and get good gear, so eventually we were able to take on the raid, which we had to be 100 key or power for. Whilst we were playing through the silver story, once again, I had this stupid glitch occur. Teleport near, now I can't get out. Look, I'm, I'm gonna die. <laughs> I, I can't do anything. I got stuck inside one of the ship's cabins. I didn't actually get on video how it happened, but pretty much an enemy had glitched inside of here and I used my special assassin ability to pretty much teleport in and take him out, but that means I couldn't get back out. So my friend Aesops had to take on probably the hardest mission all by himself as we had to slay Sukbata and his guards. And honestly, this is probably what drove us to insanity the most whilst doing the story, was hearing the stupid name Sukbatar over and over again. I never want to hear this name or see this dude ever again. <sighs> okay, rant over. Luckily, we were able to still complete the mission as because I was alive, anytime Aesops got knocked, he would eventually respawn and we could never fail the mission. So after a few attempts, he managed to take down Sukbatar all by himself. And so eventually we did beat the story on the silver difficulty and straight after that, you know what we did? We went and did the story all over again on the gold difficulty. So that means we played through the same nine story missions three times. Don't worry though, this will get worse later on. But for now, we did manage to hit rank 20 on our first roll. So I managed to max out my assassin. And after figuring this out, deciding which role I was going to choose next, I also discovered that gear luckily does transfer across builds, so you can instantly pretty much max out each role, so you can take on the harder missions straight away without having to do bronze difficulty all over again. And for my next role, I ended up choosing the Samurai. Aesops decided to go Hunter, and we ended up getting the cool duo of Kratos and Aloy because in this game you can get those skins. And now that we were power 100, instead of going straight into the raid, we decided to take on a gold survival as there was a trophy related to completing one of these. 
And unfortunately, things did not go very well as we only had three players and for survival, it's probably key that you have four to make it a lot easier. So as soon as one ghost fell and couldn't be rezzed, that was game over. We failed on wave 12. So we wasted half an hour just for nothing. So after that, we decided to make the combined decision to head back to the gold story and finish that off so we could get better gear so we would be well equipped to take on the gold survival and actually succeed this time. And as a bonus, we were actually getting pretty close to getting rank 20 on our second build. And so this time when we took on the gold survival, we absolutely breezed through it. Luckily, we had four people. And another key thing, we actually had a Ronin who could heal everyone, which made things a lot easier. So we got the gold survival done pretty easily. Challenge. Let's go. Ultimate truth. Complete the final wave in a gold survival. After that, we then decided to take on a Nightmare Rivals Weekly Challenge, as this would guarantee us a 110 gear reward, which is the max key or power you can get, and that way we would be able to complete another trophy. And luckily for us, as soon as we spawned in, the other team left. So it was the 2v0, the game didn't cancel, so we were pretty much able to get a free win. And by doing that, we got our first 110 legendary gear and also hit rank 20 as well. And by getting the 110 gear, you can activate a mastery challenge on it, but you have to bind it to only one class. So I chose my assassin as that is what I was going to use for the raids. By doing this, I got the trophy honor bound for binding my first piece of gear to a class. And now it was time to take on the infamous raids. And not going to lie, on our very first raid attempt we got super lucky we got paired up with ry2 uojima and tsunamic sorry if i butchered those names but these dudes were absolute legends they carried us through the first chapter all we did was follow them they knew exactly where to go what to do where all the bonus chests were and it was a breeze and so we actually managed to get the first raid chapter done in only half an hour with all bonus objectives complete so unfortunately the two left after chapter one and they weren't able to help us with chapter two but i'm so thankful as they made chapter one a lot easier also i unlocked my first piece of cursed gear and essentially a cursed gear is a weaker version and it also has a curse that negatively impacts your gameplay. For example, whenever I take damage, EO will taunt me on this one. But as soon as you've completed the challenge to purify the cursed gear, it goes up to a higher level that it's meant to be. So about 110, for example, on this one. And by doing this, I would get a trophy. So in order to do this, we loaded up into a story mission. I had to take out disciples, which are these healers here, and my friend had to take out some dogs. And by doing this, we would get the trophy. A curse no more. You purified a cursed object. And so after getting that trophy, I only had two more to get, which was Transcendence for completing all three raid chapters and reaching rank 20 with all roles. So it was now time to move on to chapter two of the raid. And spoiler alert, this was the worst one out of the three for sure. We got off to a fantastic start with the first two randoms we had instantly leaving. Luckily, on our second attempt, we got paired with the amazing Focus On Yourself and Mr. Mick Fumata. And the thing with Raid 2 is it is very key that you have communication as there are platforming sections like this where you need to have a certain element in order to bring the platform up. And the only person without the element can actually see what the next one is. So they need to be making call outs as to who jumped first and so luckily I had Aesops doing that and probably our own fault we should have been in game chat helping the other two out but they just somehow knew which one was next so I don't know maybe they were looking at a guide or already done it heaps of times but they knew exactly which one was next and things were going pretty smoothly focus on yourself especially seems to know exactly what he was doing and was pretty much carrying us through it and we thought for sure this was going to be the run. Until Mr. Mick Fumata decided to be an absolute bot. Right, ready. Oh, he fell. Okay, to be fair to him on that one, he did have to jump at the exact same time as us, as I had two elements in a row, and as soon as I jump, the platform disappears. So he probably didn't know that's what we had to do. But come on, there's no excuse for this next one. He literally just jumped off the edge for no reason. And then he did this on the very next attempt. Jump, quick, Joe, jump, jump, jump. He, he oh. missed the jump! How did you miss the... 
Oh my god. <laughs> For a game that isn't even meant to be a platformer, and it should be easy, this dude was terrible. So, so everyone get ready. He missed oh. again! How do you miss? How bad do you have to be to miss the jump? <laughs> it's not even that hard. He's literally <laughs> jumping to the right of it. Not oh even, it's not that hard, bro. This bozo just can't jump properly. It's literally not even that hard. Surely this next attempt we can get it done. What? Okay, come on. Come on, brother. It's you, Mr. McFumata. Go! What? No, he baited me! He baited me! He went to jump and then he didn't jump! What is he? Mm, I should that's my own fault. I should have waited. I should have waited. Bro, what? Why did he like run and then not and then stop at the last second? Okay, that one was kind of my own fault. There is a bit of buffer time when they jump. You still have a little bit of time to jump after them. So I probably should have waited until he was actually in the animation jumping before I jumped. But come on, this next one is just inexcusable. All right. He, he missed again, bro. How how is this guy so bad? How? How can you miss a jump? This game literally isn't even a platformer, bro. Like, they literally make it easy as possible to do the parkour in this game, and he is selling. Go, boys, go! Mr. F Mick Fumata, I swear! Shoot us, shoot us, oh. please! Shoot us, shoot us! What is it? <laughs> oh, Mr. Mick Fumata! <laughs> How is he so bad? <laughs> How can you miss these jumps, bro? Brother. Go, please, Mr. Mick Fumata. He did- I'm done, bro. I'm done. I can't, bro. On my screen, he jumped. He jumped on my screen. We're never gonna get this. Someone's done. gonna oh my God, bro. I don't know how this miss a. Oh, uh, yep. There fuck. you go. He's done. That's Damn. Why no rules. Yeah. This is your fault. This is your fault, mate. And then straight away, as soon as we found some new people, Samurai and Cantam 2009, we literally got past it instantly in like 10 minutes. It took us half an hour with Mr. Mick Fumata just to fail over and over again, and we got past it straight away as soon as we got new people. Okay, I don't want to hate on him too much. It was obviously accidental, and he didn't mean to do it. And honestly, we probably should have been in game chat helping him out by giving him the callouts. Mr. Mick Fumata, if you're watching, I'm sorry. You're a bit of a bot. But thank you for trying anyway. Moving on though, these next two people we had were so good. Samurai, we actually went game chat this time and Samurai was doing all the call outs, so shout out to him. It's gonna be Storm again. But little did we know, we still had heaps of this raid to go. We got stuck on this area for a bit with this blood well in the middle. I wasn't sure what I was doing exactly, but if you stay in here for too long, you get corrupted. And as soon as you hit 10 corruption, you automatically die. I didn't know this at the start, and I think the only one who did was Cantam, but he wasn't in game chat, unfortunately, so he couldn't tell us. So after a few failed attempts here, I ended up looking up a guide, and so did Samurai, and we figured out that we can't stand in the middle for too long until we have about eight corruption and then go back to another area to heal and then continue fighting enemies in this well area to open up the next gate. We then had to do some more parkour which was fairly standard by now and eventually we got to the final stage which definitely took the longest. In this area you had to grab these white crystals and take them back to the obelisk which you had to protect. So two people had to protect it while the other two had to go off and get more of the crystals to finish off the obelisk. Aesops and I were the ones tasked with doing to get the rest of the crystals. Unfortunately, our first fail, the other two weren't able to fully protect the obelisk, so it ended up fully powering up, which is an automatic fail. On our second attempt, we did manage to deliver the crystal though, and now we had to move on to get the third one, and luckily we did manage to deliver it straight away. And now moving on to the final crystal, all four of us had to help with this one as we had to split off and go and stand on a pressure plate on each side in order to open up the way to get the fourth crystal. So unfortunately no one was protecting the obelisk. But that didn't matter though because Cantem ended up getting knocked and we had to rush to revive him. But unfortunately no one could get there in time. And because of that we had to restart again and get all three crystals again and each time it takes like five to ten minutes. So after that we finally made it back to the same spot where Samurai was about to get the crystal and Cantam got knocked. So Aesops and Samurai, who dropped the crystal, both ran to res Cantam, which we did, but unfortunately, 
the idol respawns after 30 seconds when it's being dropped so we didn't have time to go back and get the crystal so it spawned up the top again and at that point it was pretty much too late as the obelisk became fully charged and we failed so we had to do that process all over again and while we were doing it for some reason samurai left maybe i don't know maybe his internet disconnected him but we left and we were down to three but luckily we knew that we were still going to be able to do it with just three so once we got back to where we were aesops and i both went to go stand on the pressure plate to help cantem get up and get the fourth and final crystal wait <laughs> he's got the he's got the thing wait what what the so I'm still not sure how Cantem did this, but he managed to glitch his way up to get the fourth and final crystal without the use of the pressure plates. So on his way back to the obelisk though, he did end up getting knocked and surrounded by all the enemies. Luckily, Aesops was on the ball, managed to pick the crystal up to reset the timer, and I went and revived Cantem whilst Aesops delivered the fourth and final crystal. And so as you can see, after an hour and 40 minutes, we finally managed to beat to the chapter two raid. I feel so bad for Samurai. He spent that whole time with us just to leave at the end or get disconnected at the end. We were that close to finishing, um, but I'm glad we were able to get it done and didn't have to spend another hour and a half doing this crappy raid. And so at this point, we just wanted to finish off the third and final raid. And so we loaded straight into it. And essentially this final raid is just a boss fight against Eo herself. And if you're good at the game, it can only take you about 10 minutes. So for this third raid, I would highly recommend that you have four players. There are two hearts that you must protect. So that's two right there. And then the other two have to focus on dealing damage to Eo herself. So there are these Tory gates that you have to parkour up to and once you go inside of them you fight against EO in a duel like similar in the single player and you pretty much have to have always someone fighting her up here dealing damage and then everyone must focus on using the spirit bow to stop her major attacks like this as she does lots of charge up damage to the obelisk and can also spawn in very tough shades that do lots of damage as well. And so the first attempt did not go very well. And neither did the second. And guess what? Neither did the third. After another probably 10 fails after that, we were getting really close to giving up and not knowing what to do. But luckily for us, the ghost of Tsushima God heard our cry out for help and gifted us with the amazing player that is Monkey Batusai. I don't know what type of black magic Monkey Batusa was using, but he was able to get up to the Tory gates without even using the platforms all by himself by using a speedrun technique somehow. And he was taking EO down so quick all by himself. So we just sat back and let him do his thing. And just like that, he got EO to her second phase already. And not once up to this point had we made it to her second phase. So this was new territory for us, but Luckily, her second phase is so much easier than her first as it's not in a duel, so you're able to use all your special abilities. So Monkey Patusai was going crazy with his special. I was using my special assassin abilities and we literally got her down to no health in like 10 seconds, as you can see. So shout out to Monkey Patusai. He is the real legend. If not for him, I don't know if we could have done it. Yes, transcendent. <laughs> <laughs> Complete all three raid chapters. No way we just did it just like that. And after that, I actually ended up sending Monkey Batusai a thank you message as I was so appreciative that we were finally done with this raid. And pretty much after that, it was smooth sailing. All we had to do was reach rank 20 on the final two rolls. So for me, it was Hunter and the Ronin. And the quickest and easiest way to do this is just do quick play story missions on gold difficulty. They take like 10 minutes to complete and you get XP fairly quickly to get to rank 20. And so here we did a quick little bronze story mission which took like five minutes just to get the tiny little of XP that we needed for rank 20. So we didn't waste too much time so we could move straight on to the final class. And so about another couple of hours later, I managed to max out the Ronin class to level 20 and we got our trophy. Give it to us. Yes! yes! Ultimate yes. warrior reach rank 20 with our rolls. Yes! So finally, after doing the Legends mode for Ghost of Tsushima, I can finally say I have truly 100%ed the game. 
All in all, I had quite a bit of fun with the multiplayer. Clearly, it is a bit grindy, and the raid chapters can be very annoying if you don't have the right team. But honestly, I think I still had more fun with this than I did on the nights. Anyway, all jokes aside, I would highly recommend that you guys go check out my Platinum video on Ghost of Tsushima and also the video I made for the single player DLC if you haven't already. And so thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you all so much for the support recently. I really do appreciate it. And if you've made it this far in the video, comment down below, RIP Mr. Mick Fumata. Anyways, I'll see you guys all in the next one.